Hello everyone, Denise here. Today I'm going to do a tutorial using this 100% cotton yarn by Mainstays. The tutorial I'm going to do today is a bag holder. So let's get started. Okay, so this yarn I picked up at Walmart. It is 100% cotton, 180 yards, 3.5 ounces or 100 grams, 165 meters. It is a medium worsted weight four. It calls for US eight knitting needles or a US H eight five mm hook. It says machine wash cold, do not bleach, do not tumble dry, iron low heat. So this color is called blue shell. It is soft. I have never worked with this yarn before, so this will be a review and a tutorial. Find the middle here, if I can. Well, I'm finding a lot, just not the end. So we're gonna barf it out. I want to say it is very similar to I Love This Cotton by Hobby Lobby in feel. Okay, so this bag tutorial is going to be very simple. I'm going to start out with a couple of rows of double crochet and then switch to a mesh stitch. The mesh stitch helps to uh, keep very many bags in the bag holder. It, it allows for it to stretch and expand. So it holds a lot. I want to say a lot. I've never counted how many I have in mine, but it holds a lot. <laughs> so let's get started. Okay, we're going to start with a slip knot. Always just wrap it around two fingers, pull the working yarn through, pull up, slip knot, you can adjust, okay, so I'm going to make the bag holder about six inches in diameter, so roughly about that big. So I'm just gonna chain one, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, No. 37, 38, 39, 40. Seems about right. It's not six inches. We'll go a few more. 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46. Still doesn't seem like six inches, but that's better. Okay, so I chained 46. Now I'm going to join to the first chain on our foundation row here. So I'm gonna make sure it's not twisted. Make sure all the V's are facing up. Just join in. Okay, so I am going to do a row of double crochets. So I'm gonna chain three. That will be our first one. And in the next one, make a double crochet. And all the way around, we're gonna do 
double crochets in every stitch. You can go through the back loop, you can go through the top loop, you can go through both loops, it is up to you. It tends to look neater when you go through the back loop. So this one was through two, this one was through two, this is through one, this is through two. Let me show you what it looks like through the back loop. So to go through the back loop on a project, you would turn slightly so instead of seeing the V's on the front here, you see bumps. So bump, 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 you'd go into the bump. So let's double crochet in every bump, which is every stitch, it's just the back of the stitch. This is personal preference. It does not matter if you go in the back loop at all. But if you do, the side of the project looks nice. The top of the project looks nice. So it is a cleaner look when you're going through the back bump of each stitch. So I'm gonna do that all the way around and I will meet you for round two. Okay, so I made it around. I'm going to join to the top of the first chain three. We have our first round. So we're going to go on to round two. Round two, I am going to double crochet in each of the double crochets. I'm also going to do that for round three. So I will meet up with you at the end of round three when I have three entire rounds of double crochets. Okay, so we are at the end of our round three. We have as many stitches as we started with. So I started with a chain of 46. I have 46 double crochets at the end of my round three. If you want to make this a different size, smaller or larger, chain as many as you want and then join in the round. So we are going to start the body of the bag. It is going to be in a mesh stitch. So that is a chain four, skip one, double crochet in the beginning of every round. And then once we start that, then uh, the rest of that round will be chain one, skip a stitch, double crochet in the next stitch. You're going to continue on as long as you want your bag holder to be. The one in my kitchen is over a foot long, but it is also filled with bags. I think I made it about a foot long when I originally started before bags were in it. Once you put bags in it, it will expand and it will get bigger. Just uh, keep that in mind. So you're not having like a three foot bag holder in your kitchen unless that's what you want. Um, it will expand once you put bags in it. So let me grab mine really quick and I'll show you uh, what the stitch will look like with bags in it.
So this is the stitch with bags in it. As you can see, it can get very big. Um, mine needs a revamp because when I first originally made this pattern, I used a ponytail holder for the end and that broke because of all the use. So I am revamping this so that there's no ponytail tie at the end. And uh, I'm going to use this new one for my kitchen and the old one will probably go out into my husband's loft, his pigeon loft, where he has bags out there for cleaning and whatnot. So we're going to start the mesh stitch now and that will be the length of your bag. However long you want that to be, you go until you want to stop. I'm going to go for about, I wanna say, probably not 12 inches, maybe around 10 inches. I'll make my mesh stitch uh, part of the body of my bag. I also have to consider, I only bought one of these. I think there's plenty of yardage here uh, because the mesh stitch doesn't take a lot of yarn. So we'll see. I think, I think I'll decide once I get around 10 inches, I'll show you what I have uh, on my project and then I'll decide what I want to do from there. So this part is actually the bottom of your bag holder. So as you work up, you're working towards the top of your project. And um, I'll show you how to do the seat, or the, I will show you how to do the mesh stitch now. So every row, so every round, we will start with a chain four. And if you saw my lantern tutorial, this will feel very familiar because it's the same stitch. Every row, every... So every round will start with a chain four and then we will skip one stitch and we will put a double crochet in the next. That's the start of every round. Then we will chain one, skip a stitch, double crochet. Chain one, skip a stitch, double crochet. Chain one, skip a stitch, double crochet. We are going to continue that. We are going to continue that all the way around this row. When we get, <laughs> we are going to continue that all the way around this round. When we get to the end of the round, we are going to slip stitch into the top of the chain three portion because this chain is a divider, so we will join right there. Okay, so I'm gonna go all the way around this round. I will meet up with you at the end of this round. And every round after this is going to be a repeat of this round. So if you got this round set, you are good to go. Make your body of your bag as long as you want. When you are ready to continue, we will finish the bag up.
Okay, we are at the end of our round. We have one stitch we need to skip. We have a chain one right here in between. And like I said before, we are going to slip stitch into the third chain. One, two, three. And we have round four done. So continuing on, we are going to do the same exact thing. We are going to chain four in the beginning, skip one stitch, double crochet in the next, chain one, skip one stitch, double crochet in the next. And then at the end of the round, we are going to slip stitch into the third chain, just like this. And we are going to continue as long as you want your bag. If you want your bag a foot, make it a foot. If you want it two foot, make it two feet. If you want a smaller, you know, a shorter one, say you want the entire project to be 10 inches. This is about two and a half inches here with my gauge. Um, it's up to you. It's, it doesn't really matter how big you make it. it. It will stretch with bags in it. So it is totally up to you how far you want to go with the body of the bag. I'm going to do several rows and then I will meet up with you and let you know what I decide on what I'm going to do. So each and every row we are going to chain four, skip a stitch, and double crochet in that next stitch. Chain one, skip, double crochet. Chain one, skip, double crochet. I'll meet up with you in a while. Okay, so I have quite a bit done here. I'm going to measure from the beginning of the project to where I'm at right now. So the beginning is right here. So I am at 15 inches. So I am going to start finishing the project. Uh, you finish the same way that you started. So essentially, what we're going to do is do three rows of double crochet, just like we did at the beginning. And with this end, we are starting with the mesh part instead of foundation row. So we would chain three, and we would put a double crochet in the space, and then a double crochet in the double crochet. Double crochet in the space, double crochet in the double crochet. We're gonna do that all the way around. At the end of this round, we are going to slip stitch and join to the top of that chain three. And then we are going to repeat this round two more times. So we'll chain three again, double crochet in each stitch all the way around, join, chain three, double crochet in each stitch all the way around. And I will meet up with you at the end of my last three rounds. All right, so I have mine finished. Now I need to make two ties, one for the top, one for the bottom. I am also going to make a loop at the top so that I can hang it from a hook in my kitchen. And let me show you how to do that. Okay, so we are at the top here. I had just joined. Now I'm just gonna make a loop. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the same spot. I'll slip stitch a couple over just to secure that whole loop to hang it up. Okay, so we need a tie for the top. We need a tie for the bottom. So I am going to chain two ties 
The stitches on the bag are 46 double crochets all the way around, so I'm going to chain two different chains of 56 chains per tie. So 56 each. Okay, so now I have two chains of 56 each. I'm going to thread that through the bag. Okay, so we're going to start at the back by the loop. I'm going to go in and out of the middle round. This is first, second, third round. I'm just going to weave this in and out every few stitches, like every three stitches. So one, two, three, and then I'm going to weave under, over, under. Until I get to the front. Going to even this out a bit, get around to the front, and about the front right here. Okay, and then I'm going to go to the other side and do the same thing. These are Susan Bates needles and they come in various sizes in one package. You can pick them up on Amazon if you're interested. This is for a bulky weight yarn. I just had it sitting around, that's why I'm using it. Uh, it comes in a set of several with different sizes. This one was just laying around, that's the only reason I'm using it. In and out. Okay, I'm gonna skip that one and go to that one so that they're separated by a post there. So for the ends of these ties, I generally just tie another knot at the end to secure the yarn a bit, and then I will cut it kind of close. Okay, so that's the top one. And then to cinch it shut, you would just pull and then tie. Okay, so now we're gonna do the bottom. We have an end to weave in here.
Start at the back, see the, uh, the seam there. That's how you know it's the back. And do just like we did for the front. Just gonna weave in and out every few stitches. Not going to be able to tell once it's cinched up, so it doesn't really matter. Just wanna get around to the front and pull it through there and then flip it over and do the other side. Probably gonna need some more. So the bottom and the top I did pretty tight. This is where I put my sacks in. And the bottom I would not probably do too tight. I probably would do about mid tightness so that I can pull bags out. And just tie a bow. My final thoughts on the main stays 100% cotton yarn by Walmart. I like it a lot. I like this yarn because it, when I felt it in the store, it reminded me of I Love This Cotton by Hobby Lobby. And so I pulled out an older partial ball of the I Love This Cotton and if I had my eyes closed, I could not tell them apart. They feel almost identical. The brown is I Love This Cotton. The blue is the Mainstays. They are so similar in, in feel and the way they work up. Everything they are, I could not tell you the difference. I could not tell you if my eyes were closed and I was feeling this yarn, from Walmart, I would think that it is I Love This Cotton by Hobby Lobby. It's crazy, I know. So the mainstay is 100% cotton yarn, is 180 yards, 3.5 ounces. I Love This Cotton by Hobby Lobby, same exact yardage and ounces. So I, in my opinion, they are equal in my eyes and I love this cotton has been one of my favorites for a very long time. Um, if you watched my last giveaway video, I asked what your favorite cotton yarn was, if you had ever used one. And I listed, I love this cotton by Hobby Lobby as one of my favorites. So I am not uh, over emphasizing this yarn at all by Mainstays. I think this yarn is great. It was $2.98 when I purchased it at Hobby Lobby when the yarn is on sale. I love this cotton is $2.65 each. So you would save more money if you went to Hobby Lobby to purchase some cotton on the weeks that they are 30% off. But if you do not have a Hobby Lobby in your area or you are at your local Walmart and you're wondering about this yarn, do not hesitate to buy it. It is quality, definitely quality yarn. I would recommend it. So 
go check it out. There's not a lot of colors that I could tell thus far, but you could check it out on their website as well, walmart.com. Um, this, this video is not sponsored by Walmart or anybody. It's uh, just me and my little opinion. So I purchased this yarn with my own money and my opinion is my own and it is definitely never paid for. So um, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I know I really needed to make one of these bags because I have abused my previous one to the point where it is breaking. So that is why I made this one. Uh, it's, it's really useful when you have so many of the plastic bags. Uh, a good place to keep them that it does last for a long time the reason why my other one broke was because I used I used uh, ponytail tires for the top and bottom that's the only reason it broke thank you so much for watching I do appreciate it like subscribe as you wish stay healthy stay happy stay crafting and until next time